Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Marta Pachoka, and I'm a migration expert. And today I was invited by my colleagues uh, to moderate uh, today's webinar that is entitled Poland as a country involved in the creation of a migration policy that guarantees a balance between the needs of the labor market and internal security. The webinar is organized within the grant entitled Balkan Ambitions and Polish Inspirations, which is the public task financed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland within the grant competition, Public Diplomacy 2022. The grant contractor is the Center for Europe, for Europe University of Warsaw. The main institutional partners of this grant include Center for International Relations from Poland, Institute of Central Europe from Poland, St. Clement Ochlitzki University from Bitola in North Ma Ma Macedonia, University of St. Cyril and Methodius Skopje, University of Montenegro from Montenegro, University of Nish from Serbia, Institute from research, uh, for Research and European Studies in North Macedonia, University of Gdańsk in Poland, University of Economics in Katowice in Poland, Polish European Community Studies Association from Poland. So now I would like to welcome our three great speakers. So with us are today Professor Artur Gruszczak from Jagiellonian University, Professor Janusz Balicki from Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński University in Warsaw, and PhD candidate Dominik Bach from the Center of Migration Research University of Warsaw and research assistant at the Warsaw School of uh, Economics. Uh, today's webinar uh, will take around one hour and will be divided in four main parts. So now I will give the floor to each of our invited guest speakers. They will have around 15 minutes for their contribution. And just after their uh, contributions, I will provide you with a very brief summary of what we've heard, and then I will close the meeting. So now let's start with our uh, first guest, Professor Artur Gruszczak. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar uh, dedicated to such an uh, important uh, topic, uh, especially uh, in the in the recent uh, times of recent circumstances. Not uh, just uh, in in the case of Poland, but uh, uh, in uh, European um, the European continent and and the global issue. Actually, I'd like to raise uh, the uh, the topic of uh, immigration and um, and the way how uh, this uh, um, uh, the movement of of, of people uh, across uh, the borders and uh, and um, uh, also some um, um, social and um, ethical, moral sometimes uh, social economic um, issues are uh, accompanying it uh, with, with reference to, to Polish uh, immigration policy using uh, the, um, uh, the concept of uh, curriculum as a, as a way of managing uh, migration and also as a, as a mode of uh, dealing with uh, with uh, foreigners or with the others. So, um, well, the, the, the inflow of uh, the immigrants, uh, foreigners uh, to, to Poland um, triggered a special sort of um, uh, response or attitude, also a, a special kind of imagination determined uh, by the attitude um, attributed to the content with, with an other. Of course, uh, this applies to some symbolic interactions and, and practical um, uh, problems um, associated with, uh, with, the, um, with the coming of uh, the foreigners. But of course, in um, in regard to uh, to migration movement, it uh, addresses the, the matters of identity and belongingness. So, in the case of Poland and the the past uh, immigration uh, flows, especially from the east, from Ukraine, it's uh, interesting um, encounter between 
uh, the identity of the Poles as, as uh, uh, alien migrant nation, or these traditional patterns of outflows from Poland, which predominated uh, until recently, but uh, have changed in the in the recent uh, years, uh, and um, the the, um, the welcoming or integration or handling with uh, immigrants coming in um, more and more uh, diversified and um, sizeful uh, groups. Well. Uh, I'd like to address this issue from two perspectives. One is before uh, the 24th of February, 2022, over the military aggression of Russia uh, against uh, Ukraine. And the second is the uh, outcomes of uh, this um, huge, massive uh, refugee flows and some immigrants uh, uh, mechanisms and patterns uh, which uh, have been uh, put into effect um, in, in the past uh, months. So the first general observation is, is that um, the patterns of uh, uh, perception of immigrants predominating in Poland uh, uh, were based on um, the assumption that uh, an immigrant who arrives um, in Poland uh, should be uh, adjusted to the local conditions and his or her expectation of being accepted should be duly met. Uh, of course, uh, this raises some concerns and some ambiguities when it comes to the balance of expectations. I mean, the expectations as an attitude um, on the part of the, of the Polish population, Polish authorities, Polish society. And the second are the expectations um, raised by the coming um, immigrants. So a question arises, how does is Polish attributes uh, of um, having some virtues and some vices uh, in regard to immigrants might be accommodated and uh, might be adjusted to uh, the Polish um, political system, domestic law, and of course, social, uh, social relations. And the concept of the parochialism is helpful in addressing these uh, matters, especially because parochialism is commonly understood as um, individual or group behavior um, and attitude towards a social reality, which structures collective behavior around local domestic indigenous and some inner circle. Um, methods, efforts, and uh, issues. So it is associated with the tendency to focus on some issues which are debated within a given group, a community, or uh, local societies, uh, and is marked by a positive um, attitude towards uh, uh, those who belong to those local communities, let's say, uh, um, um, indigenous people or local communities, and a passive or even hostile attitude towards uh, the others, um, either belonging to the population of the given country or just coming from, from abroad. What's also important, especially in the case of Poland, this parochial attitude is um, skeptical towards the authorities, especially central government and uh, let's say central administration, which is uh, 
in charge of um, governing, of enforcing a law and, and keeping order in the society. So this means that parochialism manifests itself in local grassroots communities. It addresses local actors, autonomous local authorities, religious leaders, grassroots uh, activists, um, also in the case of Poland, uh, the, the church and uh, parochy as such, um, and also religious activists. So we can, we can say that parochialism reduces the scale and the extent of social ties, making them not only a part of small world, but also much more homogeneous. Um, and this is due to the efficiency of enhancing some effects of similarity or social affinity with parochial interactions. Uh, parochialism also uh, helps to or facilitates uh, handling specific problems, or it offers some problem solving capacities. And sometimes, or even more often, it evokes altruistic sentiments within the community or social group, especially those which are bound by kinship, ethnicity, race, language, cultural affinity, or national identity. Uh, this in-group altruism promotes some um, internal ties which are binding the members of the community and therefore promotes mutual trust and reduces some um, difficulties in communication, understanding and um, cooperation, in-group cooperation. Well, uh, the intersection of parochialism and altruism addresses social solidarity and group benefits resulting from hostility towards other groups. So the problem with altruistic uh, parochialism is that it is beneficial for a given community, which is cohesive and which is strong uh, by default, but may trigger uh, various responses or reactions to the others. Um, just uh, um, foreigners, aliens, uh, outlanders, etc. Well, I also argue that Polish migration policy after 2015 has exhibited the tendency to favor parochialism and even to strengthen uh, this altruistic form of um, parochialism, um, especially with regard to the perception of uh, immigrants as uh, the others, if not aliens. Uh, likewise, I can say that uh, this general pattern of promoting um, parochial altruism has changed significantly in the past years, mostly due to uh, the very dynamic transformation of uh, immigration population coming to Poland. And of course, in the, in the past two months, um, real sea change uh, with regard to um, refugees, to victims of wars, uh, to those who uh, has uh, um, fled from Ukraine as a result of the war. What kind of change has uh, happened? Well, firstly, a specific, I call it domestication 
uh, has occurred based on some ethnolinguistic uh, criteria. So belongness to the same ethnolinguistic group, I mean, Slavs, um, well, affinity in religion, Christianity, some customs, habits. So um, this parochialism seen through the domestication lens and some rites of passage uh, has become milder and quicker. So the otherness, which was uh, usually um, affiliated uh, with uh, this um, um, exclusionary attitude toward migrants became uh, softer and expressed in other um, terms, in other words. So this means that this rites of passage and acceptance, domestications of uh, immigrants, especially uh, refugees from Ukraine or Ukrainian refugees in particular, um, changed the, um, the policy and also uh, has facilitated to create some new conditions or better conditions for um, for uh, immigrants and refugees and to uh, ease these hardships which usually um, accompany the, the first days or, or, or weeks or months in a new country, especially in Poland. Well, this is a, a, a interesting change. However, we should still remember that fear of immigrants is widespread in Polish authorities. At least the public opinion polls uh, has, uh, have shown that. And uh, this, um, the percentage of people who are not willing to accept refugees unconditionally and allow them to settle in Poland is relatively stable. It's between 5 and 10%. But irrespective of this exclusionary face of parochialism in, in the, let's say, Polish variant, um, now, or the nowadays, immigration policy might be more effective and make a better use of the virtues of parochialism by exploring and developing free mechanisms of immigration. The first is a better integration of domesticated foreigners. And uh, we uh, have seen that um, in, the, in the late uh, 2010s, and we have seen this clearly in the past uh, months. However, it's more up to the society and not to the government of the state uh, to um, handle this domestication. So I would say that it's the local parochial communities which take the, um, the main initiative and actually carry the burden of um, accepting, domesticating, and integrating into these local parochial um, structures. Of course, this uh, entails um, uh, some linguistic, educational, cultural issues, nevertheless, they are uh, uh, fully accommodated by local communities. The second is a stronger internalization of the problems of foreigners in the context of local um, uh, patterns. So it's, it's easier and faster uh, to understand uh, the otherness and to accept. And the third is a bottom-up capacity for self-organization without the need to involve central authorities. And I think this is what uh, the, the authorities and governments are very fond of because uh, local communities just uh, um, take over the burden of um, uh, dealing with, with immigrants. So the, the Polish case proves the rule that the stronger, more, more diverse contact is with the others, the higher the level of approval and so-called domestication um, and willingness to, to host them on a temporary and, and even permanent uh, basis. For the example of the Ukrainian refugees and immigrants, 
gives convincing evidence uh, of poles is accustoming to or getting used to the constant process regardless of their uh, current status. Either they are refugees or they are economic migrants as it had happened before the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. Um, that's all on my part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. So just to briefly uh, summarize what we've just heard, this was the topic on the problem of Adenes in the context of Poland's immigration policy and the virtues of parochialism. So we've just received a good piece of, <clears throat> I would say, uh, overview of the current uh, development, uh, but uh, well combined with this concept of parochialism on the example of uh, Poland. So we've heard about, in fact, multi-level governance that matters and is here. So what is the role between different actors of this migration uh, migration scene. We've heard about different circumstances and conditions that may influence not only our migration situation as the country, but also our migration policy. Another issue is how this policy is uh, framed and how this policy is um, obviously uh, implemented. And then the very important concept, uh, the concept of otherness, the otherness of foreigners um, and how they are perceived, how they are portrayed uh, in Poland, uh, including by, by uh, politicians. So I will, I will stop here uh, with uh, this very brief uh, remarks after your contribution. And now I would like to give the floor to our um, second speaker, Professor Janusz Balicki, and uh, his topic is migration crisis in, on the Belarusian border 2021-2022 from a humanitarian and human rights uh, perspective. So, uh, Professor, the floor is yours. You have around 15 minutes for your speech, please. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation of the interesting e event. Uh, so I prepared maybe too much and uh, I would like to speak very quickly or read very quickly uh, to present what I prepared. Uh, at the first, uh, I would say, uh, focusing on my, my, uh, on my presentation on the migration crisis on Belarus border, 2021-2022 uh, uh, from the humanitarian human rights perspective, I would like to strongly emphasize that the both uh, Lukashenko's action uh, to invite of migrants and refugees from countries where dangerous conflict occurred, promising them to help to get uh, to the West by Polish border is shameful, uh, but uh, also the uh, response uh, to it by the Polish authorities, uh, so-called uh, pushbacks are uh, contrary to international law and uh, 1951 Geneva Convention on Refugees and European Union uh, law. But I would talk, I would focus on, on this um, humanitarian um, problems and aspect. Uh, the kind of action by Lukashenko is not something new in the history. It was already used by uh, Fidel Castro in 1980s. Um, I, I have a uh, book uh, which was, uh, uh, which is in Polish, translated into Polish in this year. I have another book in English, Weapons of Mass Migration, uh, uh, Kelly uh, Greenhill. Uh, the third was uh, Nicholas Griffin. Uh, the books are showing uh, the details of this kind of uh, activity in, in the past uh, 10. Um, the analysis of the situation uh, on the Polish border based on the assumption that each state has a duty to protect its border, but at the same time, it has a duty to protect human life and to make sure that the law is res uh, respected on the uh, border. Uh, all, uh, allows for the uh, conclusion that Polish uh, policy is in conflict with international law, basic ethical and basic uh, ethical principle regarding this uh, event, uh, what happened on the border. Uh, the presentation also shows the challenge faced by civic organization uh, and the very important role that civic organization play in this situation. Uh, as far as the source of, uh, for my uh, presentation is concerned, they are 
uh, regarding the materials. Uh, I witnessed representatives of NGOs and journalists printed in the gov no, uh, government uh, independent media. Uh, there is, this, you know, probably um, the special amnesty international report regarding this issue in Poland. Uh, there are also uh, my two visits to towns close to the border and, and interviews with people, representatives of uh, NGOs and uh, people who, who were trying to help uh, refugees in the forest. Um, I met uh, being there, for example, it was 3rd of December, the father uh, with five children from Iraq, you, you know the story. Um, her, his wife was pregnant in six months and uh, she lost the baby and eventually she, she died in the hospital as well. Uh, uh, they, they are a, sm a small center in Białystok, uh, maybe 40 uh, rooms, on, or, not rooms, but the places for um, the refugees with the very difficult situation. And uh, the father uh, was there with his five uh, children. Uh, I, I could send, uh, see them and I could speak to them uh, uh, as well. Okay. Uh, according to Amnesty International, uh, the, the, the title of the report is um, uh, Poland Creative and Not Compassion at uh, Europe's Other Borders, 2022, um, uh, that Amnesty uh, published uh, the uh, report. Um, uh, and uh, this report is uh, made uh, in very proper scientific uh, way. Uh, and there's a lot of information which uh, is published in Polish and in English where we could uh, find. Um, a situation on the Polish Belarus border from the beginning uh, of the crisis until uh, middle of 2022. Uh, I would to try to, to show uh, uh, these humanitarian uh, problems uh, based on the specific um, cases. Uh, of course, uh, this presentation of uh, uh, the situation is still not completed. Uh, fortunately, uh, we can uh, read, we, could, we can hear that um, everything um, uh, is uh, gathered and, uh, and people who are very much involved there, they try to, uh, to show that, that um, uh, this situation is so, so uh, important that um, it, it must be really uh, analyzed in, in, in the future, uh, not only in, in Poland. Uh, uh, I would uh, present you one short uh, uh, testimony. Um, this uh, letter uh, that was written by uh, Marat Ismail Jazzy Diro to the Polish uh, public, to Polish society. And uh, the, uh, I, I read a few uh, uh, sentences. As, ra as I write uh, this letter to you, Polish people, my heart is filled with fear about what may have happened to a group of refugees who have been abounded uh, on the border uh, in the wilderness in a sub-zero temperature for over two weeks. The group, which includes children, women and elderly people, sent me a plea for help uh, via social media uh, on uh, 9th of October uh, last year. On the same day, a young Jazidi man who was asking for help sent me a video of the group. It includes people from Jazidi minority, Kurds from Iraq and Syrian Arabs. Some on uh, Jazidi in the group had previously spent se seven years in camps uh, in Iraq. Uh, 
according to the research contained in the Amnesty International report, foreigners who arrived in Belarus were uh, lured by attractive travel packages containing information about the possibility of easily reaching the Europe uh, of their dream. Upon arrival in Belarus, they were given instruction how uh, to get to Belarus, Bol uh, Pol uh, Pol uh, Belarus Poland border and what uh, to do next. It seems that all they had to was to they were show that you have to walk a few kilometers to border uh, and cross it and uh, it would be a transport to make them uh, to take them to the destination country however the reality turned out to be far from the promise of organizers uh, uh, this so-called excursion. This is clearly shown in this, uh, the next extract. After entering the zone often with the difficulties and after paying the Belarusian borders guard, uh, people had to make their way to Polish border defenses, avoiding capture by the uh, Bo uh, Belarus uh, border guards who often forcibly transported people to so-called assembly points. Uh, and uh, they uh, uh, where they violate forced them to attempt to cross the Polish border in group after in inevitable pushback by Polish border guards or capture by Belarusian border guards people were forcibly denied at assembly points for days or weeks uh, along with dozen or, or even hundreds others without food water or shelter and that brutally uh, and re repeatedly forced to cross the poland between uh, beaten uh, chased by poli uh, police uh, dogs and forced to cross the frozen river uh, this is the uh, uh, information from amnesty international um, I would read again, uh, the, uh, uh, I would read a very short uh, statement of 36 year old uh, Kafis from Damascus, uh, who, who, what he said to this amnesty. I believe I was building a safer future for my daughter somewhere in Europe, but if I had known, I would end up the forest for a uh, that I would. Uh, end up in the forest for 53 days, living worse than an animal begging for food and melting snow to drink water, I would never have left Syria. Uh, it means this, this kind of uh, statements, uh, no, I, I, I think that the Polish government had to know uh, the, the situation. Uh, how to ex explain? Uh, I have uh, much more this uh, kind of um, describing of the situation uh, where there are children and even uh, a few months uh, old, uh, in, in weeks in, in this forest uh, with a terrible uh, condition and situation. Uh, and I, I would say that uh, um, uh, when we remember um, what happened in 2015, 2016, uh, how uh, this uh, refugee crisis were used by the populist, uh, popu uh, uh, populist, uh, populist uh, governments uh, in Hungary and in Poland, uh, there was no any mercy, it was uh, just uh, using these poor people uh, to get the impression uh, that uh, they are so dangerous and if you vote for us, we would save you. Uh, if not, uh, it would happen what happened in the terrorist attacks in the Western uh, Europe. Uh, and it is it, probably the same um, this, uh, motivation uh, uh, is under this uh, uh, present uh, Polish uh, policy regarding this uh, poor, uh, people from, uh, trying to get to uh, Poland uh, through the Belarus border. Uh, of course, it is um, the one side uh, that we, uh, that the Polish people are so open, uh, so uh, really, uh, no, with very incredible good uh, attitude to migrants from um, uh, uh, Ukraine. It's pity that it, it happened uh, 
uh, regarding the um, immigrants from uh, other part of, of uh, the world. And uh, uh, it means it, it is um, something which is which put Poland in the strange situation in the world. But but uh, both crises are, of course, um, very often the main uh, news uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, uh, trying to uh, to keep the time, I, I, I didn't look at the uh, uh, watch and. Uh, uh, but uh, I think that I would uh, conclude um, using um, the, the interesting statement of uh, uh, Ms. Joanna Hoiska, uh, the uh, founder of the Polish Migration Forum uh, and currently MEP, um, uh, is the member of the, uh, the European pa Parliament. Uh, uh, she uh, she is, is said. Uh, by the way, when I was in the beginning of uh, uh, of December last year, there uh, she was there with other uh, people um, in Symbia Wistok, and she she could not. Uh, she tried to get to the. Um, border directly, but it was not uh, easy. And uh, uh, she uh, sh uh, she said that uh, what is happening on the Polish Belarus border is a violation of Geneva Convention. Uh, holes have or, uh, regarding this wall. Uh, holes uh, have already been cut in the wall. Uh, undermined. Uh, have been made because nothing can stop people saving their lives and their children's uh, lives. According to her, there is uh, no justification for the particularly cruel solution. It is important that all cases of violence uh, at the border are documented. This must not be forgotten. It must be constantly brought uh, to the action of those in power and spoke uh, of the, of uh, in the uh, in the European Parliament, this is not the most important uh, topic for European uh, Union. Unfortunately, even though this concern human life uh, a lot needs to uh, change here, a uh, proposal to solve the problem is to use a new technology in the age of electronic security. It is possible to protect the border in the modern way. Uh, the European U Union border is particularly in the most sensitive border, so it should not be uh, guarded uh, by primitive means, uh, but by the modern uh, ones. Uh, do you have any time or not? Rather not. Uh, we, have to, we have to finish, uh, okay. Professor. So thank you very much for your, your presentation to make a very short summary. So you referred to this geopolitical uh, circumstances regarding the border management policy in case of Poland. And we know well that the eastern part of our borders at the same time part of the eastern EU borders. Um, and what you discussed is, uh, uh, I mean, the crisis going on on the eastern border since uh, summer 2021 is often, uh, is often described as simply closed door policy from the side of the Polish government um and polish border guard on the other hand we see this open door policy in case of ukrainian citizens uh crossing another part of our eastern border so we have these like double standards in terms of our external borders uh, management policy uh thank you very much and now we are moving uh, from this uh, uh let's say uh migration policy and border uh border issues topic to something that is more focused on the foreigners uh, already living in the country. So here we, ha we have Dominic Bach, PhD candidate, with his speech on Polish cities and their experience in integration activities, the case of Warsaw. So simply, we will try to combine two topics, uh, uh, integration policy or integration activities and uh, the role of the local government in this respect. So Dominic, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes. 
Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, at the beginning, I have to I have to underline that uh, I'm a co-author co of the uh, journal with Dr. Pachoka, uh, uh, and the, the topic is is the same like my presentation today. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, Dr. Pachotka already mentioned some some very very important things. It shows that uh, we we didn't all only wrote a journal together, but we, we think uh, in the same way in, in some subjects. So when we when we talk about integration or integration uh, policy, we should we should know uh, what we really mean saying integration. And it's not an easy task. It's not an easy uh, topic because there is no consensus about what integration is. Um, even in the uh, scientific world, there is there are a few um, definitions, but they are very broad, very wide. So one of them uh, is that integration is the process of becoming an accepted part of the society. So we can we can really understand it in the uh, in a very different ways. When we add uh, decision makers, politicians, and society to, and we will uh, if we will ask them what they understand as integration, we will have every, every possible uh, answer. So with integration policy, it's even more complicated because uh, we, we don't have one common definition about integration. And here we have to add something about uh, integration policy. So in general, we have two different uh, broad types. One can be inclusive, one can be exclusive. And it's also what what uh, Dr. Pachotska already said that at one border we have uh, we, we generally close the border. The the second one is widely open. Uh, but even if we think or if we uh, try to to implement uh, inclusive uh, integration policy, we have also very various models. So it can be like um, very very open. Uh, sometimes called multicultural policy. At the other hand, we can have uh, a uh, uh, assimilationist uh, approach, which which is uh, like some will call it exclusive policy. But uh, in Europe, uh, in recent years, we observe uh, the uh, criticism of multiculturalism and shift to more uh, assimilistic uh, approach which is also another topic very important and very uh, very interesting, but I don't want to, to go deep. Uh, I, I would like just to stress that um, sometimes a multicultural approach can be in fact separationist. So uh, it's easier to, uh, to exclude, uh, exclude part of the, of the society, some groups, if we uh, don't try to really integrate them, if we don't give them opportunities to integrate with uh, like the larger groups with the um, society. But it's not only uh, the problem with definition or, or with the approach, because we also have different levels. So at least four levels, uh, four settings, like supranational, central or national, reg regional, and local. And now we observe local turn. And in especially in the European Union, we observe that uh, multi-level governance is more and more important, more and more uh, expected from, uh, from countries and uh, all those levels. So in general, in multi-level uh, governance, we should uh, have the same goal in every level and we should cooperate like every actor should cooperate and try to achieve the same goal. But uh, we also observe more and more, not only in Poland, not only in, in Polish cities, and that we, we can call it more like this joint or decoupled governance. And uh, now there, there is a perfect example uh, in Poland that some cities, including Warsaw, uh, try to start, try to build a system, in, an integration system at the local level, which is completely uh, opposite to the central level. Uh, there are different approaches, there are different understanding of, of how it should look like, who should be included, etc., etc. 
So here we have another another problematic uh, issue, uh, which uh, can be a huge obstacle to uh, to build a, a, an effective system. And <clears throat> moreover, we have uh, different approaches, which also can be very very problematic. So some cities, well, let, let's go uh, lower to, to the city level, to the local level. We can have uh, an approach where um, local governments try to build a strategy, an integration strategy, migration strategy, or they can uh, decide that they want to mainstream the, the, um, the subject of integration of foreigners. So, uh, we have example of Gdańsk, Wrocław, or Krakow, where uh, those cities, though those uh, local governments decided to implement some kind of strategies, plans. Uh, sometimes they, they are called in integration uh, strategies, but it's also uh, problematic if we can call it like purely integration. Uh, policies, or it's more uh, directed to multicultural di dialogue or non-discrimination uh, uh, issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the other hand, we have Warsaw, which, uh, as a biggest city, as a capital, as a biggest hub for uh, NGOs working with uh, foreigners, and uh, the hub of uh, the, the biggest number of foreigners in general, and especially forced migrants in Poland. Uh, Warsaw from early 2000s started an approach that um, should include everyone. So we can call it kind of a multi uh, mainstreaming approach. So there are no specific documents, no specific uh, policies uh, aimed to, to integrate or in general aimed to, to support somehow foreigners. But uh, the city tries to, to build a generic policies, uh, which will include everyone. But there is a huge problem, a huge problem with uh, correct understanding and implementing uh, of mainstreaming policies. It's very difficult because uh, the success, successful uh, mainstreaming policy needs effective coordination and it's very difficult to do it in the city like warsaw which is really the biggest city in poland there is a lot of uh, actors uh, in in the field of uh, integration and uh, effective coordination of activities is crucial uh, moreover uh, it's important to recognize diversity and different needs and uh, also and also capabilities of different groups but also individuals so very often uh, it's visible that not only in Warsaw, in, in, in Western uh, cities, in Western countries, there is also the same problem that uh, very often uh, governments, local governments, uh, concentrate on the biggest and most vulnerable groups. So nowadays we have a massive influx of uh, forced migrants from Ukraine. So it's obvious, it's normal that uh, most programs, most most activities are directed towards them, but we, in the mainstreaming uh, approach, we have to remember about every single uh, part or individual or group, which can uh, also participate in these policies. So. Uh, Sometimes it's said that, especially in Poland, um, there is like there is no really good mainstreaming, but main mainstreaming by accident. So um, the the whole concept of mainstreaming is uh, sometimes it's uh, criticized, but I I will not say that uh, it is a right uh, way to to integrate. Uh, uh, foreigners or we need a strategy it's it's a matter of choice it's a matter of coordination understanding needs and understanding uh and understanding uh what integration is what we need and what integration policy we want to uh implement moreover uh, moreover we have to remember that integration is a process 
this is like for me it's it's crucial to understand it's a process very often uh not only uh society not only politicians but basically a lot of people uh, expect that it will happen in in a really short time and we need years to to integrate people and warsaw is uh is an example that from really from early 2000s we have various uh, actors various institutions various uh ngos working uh toward integration and with time it's better and better we still in my opinion we still a uh, lack of uh, proper coordination but uh the the humanitarian crisis uh, uh which started uh, in late february 2022 showed that warsaw and other cities which uh had experiences in the, in the integration activities maybe even not policies but integration activities they are uh, they were better prepared they had some ground to build on and uh i hope that it's an optimistic uh optimistic thing and uh like the cri the crisis time is not the best time to to build uh, policies or to to find uh, a new solutions but uh, i believe that it will be an um like a trigger to really talk think and build uh, integration policies in the future so uh, i will not go uh, deep into into different uh, solutions different uh, activities in warsaw uh, i really highly recommend our uh, article we we described the um, those activities and uh, i think it can be it can be quite interesting for people uh, who would like to know what is happening in warsaw but uh to, to 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 close my my presentation i would like to say that those cities including warsaw which uh have experience they were better prepared thank you thank you dominique for your final uh final contribution so we've just heard three different uh speeches and the question is what is uh, common for them. So uh, all of them are focused on Poland, so the country we live in um, and we work. And all of them are about the different components, different aspects of the broadly understood migration studies uh, in our case. So this might be about the conditions, uh, circumstances in uh, external or internal dimension. It might be about the very uh, purely demographic uh, situation so what what is in terms of, uh, of for example population it might be about uh, some soft components like perception uh, and imagination it might be also about uh, the policy and practices that that um, that are connected to migration governance or migration management so as we see migration studies this is a very broad field of research and it covers uh, different components and our researchers our guests are dealing with different aspects of this of this migration studies being also rooted in different uh, disciplines so uh, so security studies uh, uh, political studies or social work and social uh, policy so the title of the meeting was uh, poland as a country involved in the creation of a migration policy so we have this component of creating policy and it will reflect the current state of play in the country because Poland, uh, from the legal point of view, does not possess an official in a migration policy or migration strategy. We have a very broad legal, uh, legal uh, framework uh, through different acts of law that can be obviously uh, called the basis of migration policy, but the strategy itself does not uh, but does not exist. So we are in a kind of way of creating and developing our migration policy that is adapted to the current uh, circumstances. And as you know, they are very, very, uh, they, they are very turbulent and they are changing from one day to another. Uh, then we have in the title, the component of uh, balance between the needs of the labor market and internal security. 
So as you, you can see, these two issues were not directly raised by our speakers. And this is good because in fact, labor market uh, in any way is connected to migration policy and migration situation. So it has to do, for example, with the integration activities and the way they are implemented. It also has to do with uh, who is uh, allowed to get to the country and who is not. And if we look at the uh, demographic situation of the country and our migration status, it's obvious that we are going through a very huge depopulation uh, processes uh, almost in every region of the country. I mean, every Voivodsky. So uh, we know well that the labor market and labor migration are of key importance since many years for the, uh, for the, uh, for the government. Then we have the issue of uh, internal security. I would say it's important if we look through these lenses, for example, uh, um, for, for example, from the perspective of the current development uh, in the East. So here it matters, but we should not, uh, for example, uh, implement or practice something like pushbacks on our eastern border, as Janusz discussed, uh, only uh, only referring to this concept of uh, uh, of of internal security. So we have to follow all the uh, humanitarian uh, humanitarian international humanitarian and human rights law stipulations. The same applies to asylum law and international. Uh, for example, agreement and conventions like Con uh, Geneva Convention 1951. Then also the, this phenomenon of how how people are perceived. So what uh, what Arthur said. So uh, perception, uh, inclusion or exclusion, otherness. It very uh, it may very strongly influence and uh, influence the way this Polish society the local communities receive or not newcomers. And these newcomers might be forced migrants like Ukrainians, but might be voluntary migrants, also Ukrainians. But then remember that not all migrants we are receiving, we are having, or we ha have had before are uh, from, from Ukraine or from other countries of Eastern partnership. There are also migrants coming from uh, from, for example, Middle East or uh, North Africa, and we should keep this in mind as well, as they are all human beings. So, in fact, there are many, many, uh, you know, many issues that might be discussed and elab elaborated. The facts are that we are country going to the population. Our labor market needs foreign workers. Uh, we are moving from em purely emigration country to new immigration country. And unfortunately, this is because of the crisis, humanitarian crisis in Ukraine and Russian aggression. So now we are not only a country receiving many uh, labor migrants or so voluntary migrants, but also those of forced nature. So this is important. We, our migration policy has to be really revised and uh, reshaped, taking into account these circumstances. And then we should remember about the European and international law that really matters and we are obliged to follow them as the members of the international community. So thank you very much. It was my pleasure to meet uh, online Artur, Janusz and uh, Dominik. So I hope that this one hour webinar was uh, inspiring for you and uh, you will have many questions uh, in your head and you will just dig for more details to, to learn more about the migration developments in Poland, but not only here. So thank you very much.